These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. Do you know what the name of this type of functional group is? Not the, not the specific name of this molecule, but just this general type of functional group. Answer? Okay. Now, it turns out that this name is an ether. ether. You guys probably won't cover esters this term. For the most part. All right. This is what we call an ether. An ether is when we have an oxygen connected to two alkane carbons. Notice that we have this oxygen is connected to an alkane carbon on the left and an alkane carbon on the right. So we would call this an ether. Okay. This would be another example of an ether. Okay. This would also be an ether. Even though it's cyclic, it's still an ether because we still have an oxygen connected to two alkane carbons. We could call it a cyclic ether, but it's just another example of an ether. So the general formula for an ether, can you see how this would be a good general formula for an ether? Because R just stands for a carbon chain where the carbon that's directly connected to the oxygen is an alkane carbon. This just means that the oxygen is connected to an alkane carbon on the right and on the left. By the way, then, for review, Do you remember what the name of this type of functional group is when we're connected to an alkane carbon on one side, but the oxygen is also connected to a hydrogen? A hydroxyl? We can call this a hydroxyl group. That's right. Alcohol? That's an alcohol. That's right. Alcohols have hydroxyl groups, but the most common name for that type of functional group is an alcohol. And for completeness, do you know what the name of this molecule is? This is just a very common molecule. It's just water molecule. That's just water. It's helpful to have all of these functional groups together in your notes so we can see the connection between them. Oxygen generally forms two bonds. Well, if the oxygen is bonded to two hydrogens, that's just water. If it's bonded to one hydrogen and one alkane carbon, that's an alcohol. And the only other possibility is when the oxygen is bonded to two alkane carbons, and that's an ether. Let's see if we can figure out the mechanism for this reaction. Do you have any idea what might happen first here? Well, I imagine it's probably going to uh, proceed S and 2. Sounds good. Now, the first thing to do here is to notice that this is an ionic bond. Right. I don't know if we've talked about this idea, but if you have a bond between a metal and a non-metal, those are usually ionic bonds. Anytime you have a bond between a non-metal and a sodium or potassium, those are always ionic bonds. We have to watch out for sodium and potassium. Those are just counter ions. And anytime you have that ionic bond, it's our job to put in the charges. Usually the charges are given to you in organic chemistry, but the one time they don't have to be given is if we're supposed to know that something is ionically bonded. We're expected to recognize that a bond between sodium and a non-metal or potassium and a non-metal is ionic. So we have to put in these charges. Who's the nucleophilic atom here then? The nucleophilic atom is the uh, oxygen. Because negative charges make things into nucleophiles. Now, does that mean the oxygen should be at the head of an arrow or the tail of an arrow? It's going to be at the tail of an arrow. Because the tail is where the electrons are coming from. Well, this oxygen has too much negative charge, so it has to be at the tail of an arrow. Now we have to find an electrophilic atom to put at the head. 
who would be the electrophilic atom that we can put at the head of that arrow? Um, the carbon, where the... Uh, uh, where the bromine's attached. The bromine's good. Attached. Why would it be a good idea for this to be electrophilic? I don't know if we've talked about the idea that things with pot, just like things with negative charges tend to be nucleophiles, thing with po things with positive or delta positive charges tend to be electrophiles. Well, this carbon has a delta positive charge because it's connected to the bromine. So it would be electrophilic. And also it has a good leaving group. Let's confirm this reaction a little bit. Do you, did I ever give you the handout on SN2? Yeah, you did. Do you have that with you? Let's see if I brought it. As you saw, in order to go through ethers, we're going to have to review some of the substitution reactions. So we can fit this into that table. Nice. So let's take a look at page three of the SN2 handout. Let's try to figure out what row and what column we're in in the table. Have we discussed that a good name for this carbon is the alpha carbon? Correct. The alpha carbon is the carbon that's connected to the leaving group. Well, what type of alpha carbon do we have here, primary, secondary, or tertiary? Primary. Primary. Now, in that table, there's actually two different rows for primary because you might have a primary with a tertiary beta carbon. That would have more stair kindreds. So are we in the normal primary alpha carbon row, or do we need the, the, the row for a tertiary beta carbon? We're in the normal. That's right. This beta carbon doesn't have that much stair kindreds. It's not tertiary, so we're just in the second row of the table. Okay. And now we have to find the right column. Who is our nucleophilic atom here again? Uh, the nucleophile is the oxygen. That's a good answer, but a better answer would have been the negative oxygen. Okay. Because if you take a look at the yes. columns here, there's both neutral and negative. Where's our negative oxygen? Right here. That's right. And now we still have some complications because a negative oxygen could be part of a bulky or a non-bulky base. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Does this look bulky or non-bulky? Non-bulky. Um, non-bulky. In introductory organic chemistry, there's really only two common bulky bases. The only common bulky bases are terpenal oxide and LDA. You can see this is definitely bulkier than this here. Unless you're using terpenal oxide or LDA, usually things are not bulky enough to be considered a bulky base. Well, then what does the table predict will be the reaction? SN2. SN2? Well, you already had that prediction on your own, but it's good to see that we could use the table to get to that same prediction over here. We're predicting that we're going to get an SN2 reaction. What we have to worry about here is that we might get E2 instead, because you can see that an oxygen with a negative charge oftentimes does give you E2 reactions, even with a non bulky base. But here we have not quite enough, not, not quite enough steric hindrance to, to really shut down the SN2. So we'd expect the main reaction would be SN2. Remember, what's the big obstacle to SN2? Steric hindrance that blocks the nucleophile. But there's not that much steric hindrance in either the substrate or the nucleophile here. We're going to have an SN2. Well, how many steps are there, do you remember, in an SN2 reaction? Just one. That means the leaving group has to leave at the same time as the nucleophile attacks. That's why we had to take a pause there. Before I could figure out how to draw the arrows here, I had to figure out whether this would be SN1 or SN2. Well, now we expect this will be an SN2 reaction. Now let's see if we can draw the product from this. Well, I'll go ahead and draw that. All right. And let me remind you, or, or maybe introduce, I don't remember if we talked about these techniques before. It's very helpful to put in some numbers to make sure that we don't add or drop carbons. I'm not going to bother numbering the oxygen because there's only one oxygen. I'm not going to lose track of that. Now, let's go through this step by step. Okay. I'm going to ask you who each atom is attached to, and it's important to list all the atoms that are directly connected to the atom we're focusing on. Who's directly connected to the number one carbon? The number two. Right, and of course, we're talking about the, the product or intermediate here. Now, who's going to be connected to the number two? Uh, the oxygen, negative oxygen. And who's going to be connected to the oxygen? Uh, the number six. Good. Who's connected to the number six? Um, the number five. Good. And the product, is the bromine going to be attached to the number six? No. No? Because it's leaving. That's what this arrow tells us. All we have to do now is just obey the arrows. The arrows tell us what product to draw. We're not trying to draw something that feels good or something that seems familiar. We're just obeying the arrows. Who's connected to the number five? Number four. And to the number four? That's the end of our line. We also have a bromine that left. Now we have to go back and make sure we change two charges. Every step of every mechanism, you always change two charges at the initial tail and the final head. Now is, is the bromine, uh, it's not, is it negative? That was one of the charges we had to change. That's right. 
The bromine is at the final head, and since it started neutral, it should end up negative. All right. And who was at the initial tail? This oxygen. Sure. Well, this oxygen started negative, and it's losing electrons, so it ends up neutral. When you were going through here, you said that it was a negative oxygen attached to the number two, but maybe you were already thinking you have to take off that negative. Anyway, this gives us our products here. What about this sodium? Well, this is just the spectator ion. Sodium and potassium are just spectator ions. They don't participate in the reactions. Generally speaking, our metal ions don't participate in the reactions. However, the most elegant thing is to show them forming ionic bonds with whoever has a charge. Well, this oxygen is losing the charge, so it's not going to have an ionic bond to the sodium anymore. But the bromine gained a charge. So it's best to show that the spectator ion has moved over here to counter this charge. That's a technicality. The most important thing is to get this product right.